The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we're going to start out here today with the uh, weekly cash S&P uh, chart. The reason why is, uh, very simply, I do not have my DAX and FTSE charts. Mr. AS over in the UK is taking a holiday, so uh, I, I rely on him for those. But we'll look at this weekly cash chart here. I think it'll give us a little bit of an idea where we might be. Uh, as you can see here, there's a potential for a head and shoulders pattern here. Uh, this is a absolutely uh, symmetrical one. Your left shoulder and your right shoulder are pretty much spot on. Your uh, uh, The 20 minute line that you see there is basically a line that Jim Twentyman worked on when he was doing his GAN work. If you remember anybody that studied GAN, you know he looked at 45 degree lines, 30 degree lines, 72 degree lines, and you know they were all lines all over the page. But Jim knew how to uh, look at certain ones. But then he found that when these lines touched out into the future, uh, for some reason they act as uh, you know repulsive points where the market could actually accelerate to the downside. It was almost like a fulcrum. Uh, one of the things that we did when we were working at Drexel, after I'd worked there a year, I needed help and I asked Jim to come over to work with me and, and he did. And uh, of course we had a really good support team at Drexel and Jim needed a uh, architectural graph machine. In other words, it graphed his own charts. So he, he uh, started to make his own charts so that he could see these things uh, very, very clearly. Now remember this was, uh, this was 1978, 79. So, you know, there wasn't a lot out there. We didn't have, you know, charts on the computer and stuff till the uh, mid 80s, 83, 84. Uh, so this was really the state of the art stuff. So we found this 20 minute line. You don't see them very often, but when you do, they do act like, uh, you know, some type of a repulsive line that uh, the markets move off of. So very important that we're looking at this today. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later, but uh, remember, it's really hard to look at it technically. It's a visual thing that you need to look at. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, it's not going to affect you very much at all. But uh, it is an important line from our perspective because when they do hit, they uh, – and, you know, they don't always have. That means that if this line, if the S&P were higher today, this line would not be functional. It would already be broken. So that's one of the key reasons why it looks so interesting. But the most important part of this weekly chart that we're looking at here today is this head and shoulders pattern. Because uh, if it fails, uh, it'll go all the way up to that three drive pattern, which will take us up another a lot, another oh, quite a few up to 308 area in this cash S&P. So that would be way above 3,000, 3,000 and something in the uh, cash or in the E-mini future. So um, oh, you have to watch it very closely because any any strength today would certainly break this uh, to the upside and you'd be looking at something that would be uh, a, a great deal uh, more bullish. Now, I think the we've talked about gold. I've drunk. I've taken the gold and ran it into the ground as about as much as I can. Uh, we're looking for a bottom in here uh, either today, uh, probably today. That's what we're looking at today or tomorrow, is what we're thinking that we might be seeing here in the gold. Uh, you'll take a look at this. You'll be able to see that uh, we have. Uh, uh, completed the head and shoulders pattern symmetrically, and I mean by that that the time between the left shoulder and the right shoulder, the full moon of December 20, December 4th, 2017, down to the lunar eclipse of August the 12th of uh, 2018, to where we are right now with the full moon that we had last Friday on the um, and boy, is it a beautiful full moon here in the desert. Oh, my goodness. You don't even need lights today. It's so so spectacular. Uh, that came in on Friday, and that day uh, measures out to the 22nd of 
April, and that is today. So this is the day where we are covering our short positions. We sold the original one up around uh, uh, 1330. We covered that one around uh, tw uh, 1288, I believe, and put it back out again and added a new position at 1323. So we're covering all those positions today at the uh, 1280 level and uh, 1281 actually. And so we are out of that position uh, by using a buy stop above the previous high, trading a little bit below that now. But we're, we're, what we're waiting for now is to find a low entry buy signal if we can in the gold. But we probably won't have that until late today or maybe tomorrow. But I'll do that by the video service that I send out when we have a trade that is lined up uh, what we think is going to work. We're seeing the same thing in silver. Silver is acting extremely well. Uh, had you know when it was gold was making new lows, the silver could not even make uh, new lows. That's a very positive thing, and uh, you know these are. I don't want to rehash all of these because we've gone over these over and over again. But uh, it's starting to act at least a, a slightly bit uh, bullish in some of these things. One of the questions that I received over the holiday, one second please, <clears throat> was the uh, the old thing with the. Uh, uh, from uh, Richard, uh, oh dear, just as I get ready to say it, I can forget it. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Boy, that's, boy, I tell you, as you get older, these little mind lapses. Uh, Richard Russell from the, uh, thank you very much, Marshall, my God, you little mind-reading devil, uh, was, uh, you must have sent the one that was the email uh, about the the uh, the Dow theory, and that was, you know, a very important thing when you have to have the new new highs in both the uh, transportations and the Russell and the utilities and the stocks all at the same time. But remember, this was going back 50, 60 years ago, and we didn't have the data and all the stuff that we have now. We didn't have fancy futures. We didn't have ETFs. We didn't have all the other stuff that's out there. So that's probably affected some of this in a great deal. That would be my guess. But uh, Richard Russell was a really, uh, a really a great human being, very generous with his information and his time. And he lived into his mid-90s, and he was still trading up to the very end, And uh, which I hope I'll be doing someday. John Hill, my, my mentor, is 93. He's going to be um, uh, 94 pretty soon and uh, next month. And uh, he's still trading every day along with his uh, two sons and his daughter. So it keeps us young. You know, that's good. And I, I certainly enjoy it. For some reason, uh, Mondays are my roughest days. I don't know why. I do a lot of work over the weekend, but on Mondays, uh, for some reason, uh, I you know I keep track of uh, you know which which days of the week are the best for me. And Monday is is the worst. I mean, uh, you know, most of them are pretty pretty close to uh, normal, but that the there is a slight bit of a of a of a negativity for me on Monday. That in other words, of the five days of the week, the Monday is my less profitable day. Of, uh, of the week. So I'm always a little bit more uh, cautious uh, on that day. So that's just, uh, you know, looking at the numbers and saying, be very, very careful. I see one thing that I really want to do today that I'm afraid if I talk about it, it'll probably not work. So I've sent out a, a, a email on it, but I, I don't want to talk about it here on the air. So we're going to take a little break here to pay a few bills for Tom. And then we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about these currencies, folks, because it's going to be really good. You know, we'll see what it's like. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, let's take a quick look here at these Treasury bonds, folks. They're beginning to look more and more ominous all the time. Uh, we've mentioned, let's do the notes first because it gives you a pretty good idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, what we're watching here on the, uh, the Treasury notes, this is a daily chart. And as you can see, we went up to a 1.618 expansion there back in the mid middle of March on the 15th. Uh, and uh, since that time, we've been down, we're two weeks down. Uh, we stopped at the 61% retracement last week at that 122.28 uh, uh, level in the uh, Treasury notes. As long as we stay above that, there's a sm small chance, well, there's a chance, it's not necessarily small, that we'll get a little bit of a rally here uh, in the notes, but they're beginning to look, both notes and bonds are beginning to look more and more bearish. Remember, this is a daily chart going back over the last year and a half, and these bonds topped three years ago uh, at a much, much higher level. So we're just making a 382 retracement in that move. That's what you're seeing there at that 125 level. Because when we rallied from the uh, the butterfly pattern, excuse me, the other uh, butterfly pattern that we had at the uh, excuse me, in October of last year, uh, that it, it down at that 117, we rallied up to, you know, eight handles up to 125. That was uh, nothing more than a 382 retracement on the long-term weekly chart that we feature in the newsletter. So that's another one that makes us wonder that these rates do want to go higher. I know there's a lot of information about the Federal Reserve out there, folks, but it really does make an inter interesting spot to like, take a look at. Mr. Z's talking about the, the coffee, and I really like the coffee. I'm becoming a coffee trader, Mr. Z. Hold on a second here, and I want to bring up this really cool-looking chart here because it had a really good buy pattern here last week. Let's just get this up here so we can get on the same page with the master himself, Mr. Z. And you'll notice here that we went down down to that 127 level with a wide ranging bar. We had an ABCD to that level. That was at 87. Uh, that was the spot on low. And the next day we opened about unchanged and then we rallied and now we're up another uh, $2 a pound here. This has got a chance for one heck of a rally, folk. It's very similar to the one that we might have had back in September where we rallied from 96 up to 126, that's 30 cents a pound 
in coffee. And believe me, that do you think that's a lot? You know, coffee was over uh, 300 uh, more than once. So this is a really cheap price for coffee. This is one of the reasons why uh, Starbucks makes so much money. They can still raise prices when their underlying uh, commodity keeps going down, which is a really a good deal for them. But anyway, coffee does look really good. I can't buy it on any strength in here because it's still in a, such a strong downtrend. But I am looking at it. Uh, that have a heck of a good rally in here. But it did have a really nice pattern down there. In fact, we brought this to your attention before, but it is starting to rally a little bit. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, see what's going on with it as we move through some of these other things. By the way, the lines are the lines of the telephone lines into TFNN are jammed this morning as usual. But if you'll be patient, uh, call in eight seven seven. 9276648 if you have any questions about any of the things that we talk about here any stock that you might look at I'm not too much with stocks but usually I can pull them up and give a rough idea of uh, you know where we stand you know with some of these and since uh, someone's asked us about this let's take a look at the fang stocks today folks uh, I want to show you apple cuz it's still uh, acting pretty good uh, we've actually gone above the 61% uh, retracement uh, by about $3 a share. Uh, I believe it's trading a little bit lower today, about a $2. But that uh, 30, the 61% retracement came in at 201. Uh, that was off the from the high to the low, and so that's a very interesting one. All of these have not um, made new highs. Uh, some of them look better than others. Here's one that is uh, always in the news, and that's the Netflix. And uh, you'll notice here that uh, Netflix has made a small ABCD pattern in the last few weeks, rallied up. And I believe we're trading around 350 right now, 350 and change this morning. So it's made that 78% level spot on at the 380. That was the 78% level from the high that was made back in June, June 19th of uh, 2018. So when we came down and rallied back up again, that was a perfect 78% level, and there was an ABCD pattern at the same time there. I didn't draw that one in, but yeah, if you do a little bit of creative uh, analyzing here, you can see between the uh, January and uh, March uh, 21st level, which was the spring equinox, that was a beautiful ABCD pattern and lined up perfectly, giving you a really nice place for a low risk uh, short sale. That's one of the reasons, uh, 360, thank you very much for letting me know where it is, but um, we'll see. Now, I, I did listen to the news uh, a tiny bit over the weekend about Netflix and Disney and all that stuff, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Netflix subscriber. I probably use it once a month, but uh, it's interesting to, to watch it. But I think that the people that watch Netflix are people that are different than the people that watch Disney. You know, I mean, no, Disney's got a lot of stuff in there, you know, their libraries and stuff, but those people are different than the Netflix people. That's just my guess. So I don't think not much is going to happen. The thing that shocked me the most about this is when Reed Hoffman was uh, on the uh, on the list. My God, that guy's lost 50 pounds. I hardly recognized him. And uh, I was really surprised. I mean, I you know he was just down to a fraction of what he used to be. So whatever he's doing, uh, he must be getting ready for the um, the Ironman competition that we have here in Tucson every year. I don't know if you folks know this, but I do the Ironman competition here uh, in Tucson. And of course, we have the three events. You know, we have the Pizza Hut, the McDonald's, and the Taco Bell. And the one that can make that that triumphant in a matter of uh, one hour, then you're ready to go. So we'll see. Yes, Michelle Suri, Mickey Mouse. It's the most. Uh, I don't know if you folks know this, but Mickey Mouse's picture is the most recognized picture in the world. The the biggest icon in the world. That I saw that somewhere as a factoid, and I have to believe it. You see it in China, India, wherever you go. Mickey Mouse is known everywhere. If you ever go to Copenhagen, Denmark, which is a wonderful place to visit, I, it's one of my favorite. Sarah and I just absolutely love that place. There's a place called. Uh, Tiffany, Tiffany Gardens, T Tivoli Gardens, and in 1935, uh, Roy and uh, Walt Disney were there, and they saw this, and they said, "We're going to do that in the United States," and that was their 
their inspiration for building Disneyland. And I was uh, I was there on opening day in July of uh, 1955, and uh, we had hitchhiked from Terre Haute, Indiana, all the way to Anaheim, California, to uh, go to Disneyland, and then we hitchhiked back. We were gone about four weeks, myself and uh, two of my buddies, and uh, we uh, stayed with relatives all the way. But it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyway. Um, it's uh, that's right. It's not original idea. You're absolutely correct. It was because of Tivoli Gardens, I believe, is what it's called. I think it's Tivoli Gardens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's a, it's a much smaller place than Anaheim, but you can see the theme as you go through it. But that's it. Hey, we got to pay a few bills here. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. You're right. I was right once this month. That's good. <coughs> Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, let's take a look here at Google. Boy, this has got a really great technical picture. If you like ABCD patterns and double bottoms and 135 patterns, they're all over here uh, with Google. And you can see here that we are in the process of making a butterfly pattern up in this one, uh, 1240 uh, some level, 1240 to 1250 level uh, in Google. And whether that'll be a major top or not, I don't know. But you can see the double bottom that we had from March. 
of last year uh, into the one that we had here on December the 26th. That was another, if you look at it really closely, you can see the ABCD from the 61% retracement went right down to the absolute low at 970. That was the low. That's where the ABCD measured to, and that was the final low. And then, of course, we had ABCDs all the way up, and we're still going up. Uh, I, I listened to Basil's show early this morning, and I and he said that the market's getting a tiny bit tired here, and it certainly looks like it could be. But the thing to remember is this is still a really strong uptrend, so you want to watch this correction if we do get it, because if it's very shallow, which that's all we've seen on the way up, you know, we, we could still be looking at new highs in these things. And, and believe me, they have nothing to do with the political nature of what's going on in the world, and especially here in the United States. This market goes up on anything. It doesn't make any difference. So uh, it runs separately than anything else. And I believe that it's, you know, it's run on cycles that, that are there, and uh, we try to find the underlying ones. If you remember, we had Bill Meridian on last month in early March or middle of March, and he said that there was a really strong bias from uh, April the 15th, excuse me, from March 15th into April 15th, and now we're one week past that. Uh, we did, there is a possibility that we topped on the 20th because that was a topping action. We topped on Thursday, possibly, when we hit that uh, 923 level uh, in the S&P. But, uh, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be going here. Um, uh, Terry's asking a question about a three-drive pattern in the soybeans. Terry, you are flat out spot, wrong, spot right, my friend. Let me get this up here to take a look at it. That's definitely on the watch list for today. Uh, we're going to pull this up. I'm going to do both of them for you, Terry, because the the July soybeans and the November soybeans look very, very similar. Um, I particularly like the November, and the reason why is uh, there's a lot of problems in Indiana where uh, you know where I was born, and I still have you know farming friends there. And some of these farms, they're just soaked. I mean, they just can't even get the corn in yet. I mean, it's just really, really bad. So if they can't get corn in, they certainly can't get beans in because they're planted a little bit later. So that could be a bigger problem. If we take a look here, uh, that's the July soybeans. But if we take a look here at the November, that the, that's the SX contract, you're going to see the same pattern. Now, the, these are the new crop beans. They haven't been planted yet. And any problems with these, they could really uh, be looking at the same thing. Uh, Terry, I have never traded soy B. If that's the, uh, the ETF for soybeans, I didn't even know that it existed. It doesn't surprise me because they have ETFs for everything. All I know is uh, I'll have to check that one. And the reason why is because the ETF for the Shanghai stock market, FXI, is terrible. I mean, it doesn't show any of the volatility that you get in Shanghai. The trend is slightly the same, but, you know, it's not a very good, uh, very good. When you see things like GDX, which is a very good for gold, and SLV for silver, those are great. But the others, uh, boy, some of them are terrible. You know, they're just, they just don't act like uh, the other ETFs. But you'll notice here in the November soybeans, we have a three-drive pattern forming right now. Uh, the 61% retracement comes in about $0.08 cents lower, and we're a little lower this morning, so we're probably going to get to that 905 level in November beans. So if you wanted to be a farmer, that's a good place to, uh, you know, to take a look at uh, maybe being a farmer because you don't have to risk very much at that point. But uh, we'll, we'll see what, the, what happens with it. But uh, we're, we're going to have some trouble with the crop this year because it's going in late, and it's always a, uh, yes, it's a daily chart. And it's November soybeans up to date. I believe they're down slightly. I think Mr. Z could tell me right now. I'm not able to check that right now. But we should be down just a little bit in soybeans. And that will be an interesting one to pay attention to. The soybean oil is also doing the same thing. And the soybean meal also has a uh, very uh, – someone's asking a question here. Um, uh, geez, but I do not have that uh, uh, that information on the planetary speed index that Shane has. I didn't get that, so I I'm sorry, um, Mr. Z. What I'll do is I will contact Shane later this morning and get that information and take a look at it. But I really like those planetary speed things because that's the work that George Bear did with the speed of Mercury. And, uh, you know, Mercury being a real planet, whereas the, the moon is nothing more than a satellite. And we see what happens with that because it affects the tides. 
and everything else. But with that, uh, with mercury, um, that is that's that's really an important one. I've seen some incredible things with that planetary speed index that Jim Twentyman had done, and now with the computers the way they are, we're able to get some really good data. And before you had to do all those calculations by hand, and we'll be able to look at it. So November beans are at uh, 911 right now. And what were we looking at just a second ago? Let's just double check that to see where we were. We were at uh, 913, 911. So down about another nickel. Uh, looks like it would be, uh, you know, pretty much a, a low risk trade. So keep an eye on that. It might be one that would be worth, uh, you know, paying a little bit of attention to, uh, if nothing else, for sure. So we'll watch it. Uh, that's one good thing to uh, keep keep in mind as we as we look at some of these uh, through this level in here. Now, regarding uh, uh, another market that is very very close to what I think could be a pretty good bottom, we'll switch over here uh, to the currencies here because uh, we've got that same almost the same type of pattern in the British pound that we're seeing in the. Uh, uh, hold on just one second that we're seeing in soybeans you're going to see here that we have that three drive pattern coming in at the 78 percent level we're trading around uh 20 129.90 right now in the british pound we've taken out last week's lows we haven't really done much after doing that but about another 60 or this is going to be 80 points lower at that 129.15 in the british pound pay pay close attention to that one because that's going to be very interesting. You notice we have lower tops ever since uh, March 15th, lower bottoms, and uh, but then we look at it on the daily basis, you're seeing higher bottoms. So here's a definition that you define trend by the, the time frame that you're looking at. If you're looking at it on the daily chart, this is still a, it's, a, it's in an uptrend because we've had higher tops and higher bottoms. But if you look at it, you know, on a four-hour chart or just from the dailies from March the 15th, you're in a downtrend. So you have to define what time frame you're in when you decide the trend that it's in. That's really what it's looking at. It has nothing to do with whether it's, well, it could, because some people are really good with these moving averages. But I, I use what uh, John uh, Murphy taught me, and that is uh, the trend is based on the, uh, the time frame that you're looking at. If you're in a five-minute trend and you have higher bottoms and higher tops, it's an uptrend. If you're in a 30-minute uh, trend and you have lower tops and lower bottoms, it's a downtrend. So you have to decide what trend you're in. And that's and if you're trading a 15-minute chart, you should trade a 15-minute chart and not worry about it. Don't go looking at an hourly chart if you're trading a 15-minute because you're not going to be in it that long. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big Big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Hey, I want to content, co commend uh, Terry for posting that SOYB, the ETF for uh, soybeans. My goodness, it's perfect. It is 100% correlation. Uh, so if you want to trade soybeans uh, without risking very much, uh, take a look at that ETF. That's a, that's a beauty. It's a three-drive pattern. You know, it, you're, you're pretty much there. I mean, it, it trades at such a small uh, increment that uh, you don't have to risk very much there, but it's a beautiful pattern. Uh, thanks, Terry. I didn't realize it. Uh, I, I don't know how much volume it's got, but the chart is good enough. That means it must have enough volume because it's a... Uh, it's a beauty. Uh, I'll have to watch that myself. I wrote a note. Number one thing to do today is look at SOYB. So let's pay attention to that one. That's going to be, there must be others out there. I'll have to check with Rich because he probably trades in more than I do, but I've been old, I'm an old futures trader with the emphasis on old. Another market that's got a little bit of potential here, but again, you have to give it a little bit more time, and that is the, um, the natural gas, folks. Uh, let me show you why. Uh, this is the long-term weekly chart here uh, in natural gas. Uh, someone reposted something from uh, uh, Shane's indicator. And, uh, oh, dear, I don't understand it, so I better not move into that area. I have a hard enough understanding things that I think I understand. Here's the natural gas contract. We broke down into new low ground, breaking that triple bottom. And then today we've snapped back. We've already jumped back five points. So uh, as long as we can stay above that 247 level, uh, we got a chance for some type of a, a bottom in here. How much it would be, I don't know, but uh, that's all that could possibly be is a snapback rally early this morning. But the fact that it didn't fall out of bed overnight with all the selling that hit it Friday uh, is actually a, a sort of a positive sign, but that could dissipate in, in very, very shortly. But it's something to put on the watch list because any more strength, if we should get it above the 260 level, another another eight points higher, that would really be an indication that, yes, that was some type of a major bottom in here, and we want to be looking at a place to uh, potentially go in and uh, be a buyer. But that's still down the road a little bit. Now, what we want to do is get back to looking at another one of these uh, FANG stocks that we have missed. We've got a couple others that we want to hit. We certainly want to hit uh, the Amazon, which is always big. When the Amazon and Google charts look uh, very, very cool, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're very similar. I mean, they're just, uh, you could just draw a line over both of them and uh, they go up together. I don't know if it's because of the highest price ones or not, but they have a lot of similarities in the chart patterns. Uh, very, 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 very important. And then we want to get down uh, to the, uh, the Facebook here again. Uh, this one's a little bit different, and we've just completed here. You'll notice a uh, uh, really nice three-drive pattern up here right near the 61% retracement at the uh, 182 level. 
So that's going to be an interesting one to uh, pay attention to. But look at the swings that we've had in Facebook, folks. My goodness, we went from 200 down to what 160 or something, and then uh, 140 something, and then all the way back to where we are right now. So it's going to be really crazy. Uh, I I understand the folks here that Dan are talking a little bit about Brexit. And here again, you're talking about the politics. You know, just look at the charts. They'll give you a rough idea of uh, where we're looking at, so we'll be able to see what's, what you're talking about. Steve Rose is also giving us a post here that the TAS profile for the November beans is 9.12, and we're trading at 9.11. So this is uh, that's something you ought to take a look at. That's a beautiful three-drive pattern in those beans, folks. So... Uh, and, uh, you know, if you like Gartley patterns, if you like three drive patterns, it's all together right there. If you're going to go to the ice cream shop, this is the time to go because uh, it's uh, it's got everything that you need there for to be a buyer. Uh, the actual number that I'm looking at uh, based on that November bean chart comes in at 906. And I would put a stop at 899, not risking more than uh, 350 points. And that's uh, another one that I would pay attention to. Well, one other thing I wanted, a little factoid that you folks, I'm sure you probably don't don't know this, but uh, uh, Roy Disney and his daughter, I think her name was Laura. She was very ill. She had diabetes and just had all, she was sick from the time she was a little girl. She died very young, but they were they were customers at the Drexel office there. And he would come in, and one of the best perks that you ever had for Drexel Burnham was Roy Disney, not Roy Disney, but Walt Disney wanted to retire on the premises of Disneyland in Anaheim, and where the Pirates of the Caribbean is, on the second floor there was his apartment. It's a beautiful apartment with beautiful antiques, a beautiful uh a uh, bird cage uh, elevator takes you up, and uh, what after he had passed away, uh, they had kept that separately for. They were going to make a museum out of it, but what they kept it for was for private, private parties, for birthday parties and things like that. And so, if you had a child that had a birthday and you were invited there, Mickey Mouse and Minnie and Pluto and uh, the Goofy, all of them showed up. And uh, delivered the cake, and it was really a, a big to do. I didn't get to go to any of those. My daughters did because they were invited through one of the other uh, boys from upstairs in the uh, in the Mike Milken group. But uh, it was really an incredible place to go to. I, I think it's probably still there, but I haven't been there in 40 years. So I things change in 40 years. I think Pirates of the Caribbean is still there, but whether that apartment is still there. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, this beautiful place from the pictures uh, that I saw. All right, let's take a quick look here at the last one of the uh, charts of the FANG index here. We'll take a quick look. Uh, I already did that. That's Google. So we've got them all done. We've got the whole thing covered, so that's a good deal. Um, now, uh, what was it? Oh, New York Stock Exchange Index. I wanted to show that one because this one, very, very interesting here because we have had a, a non-confirmation here uh, in the New York Stock Exchange Index. You'll notice we have that three-drive pattern that formed here uh, the two days before the full moon. But look at it, folks. It's exactly, I mean, to the tick, it's exactly 78% of the high that we made way back on January the 20th. To the tick. I mean, you can't make that stuff up. And if you look at the one that we had in September, that one was exactly at the 78% level. And how was it making it? It was making it with that little three drive pattern. You can see in the three, uh, the yellow, yellow triangle right there, that's right at the 78% level. So maybe we're going to get some type of a correction here. You know, that's always a possibility. Of course, it's also an impossibility too. So pay attention to it. But it's very interesting that it did that. The Russell is, la is lagging behind the market a bit. But, uh, you know, not by much, but uh, the, the fact that that uh, New York Stock Exchange did exactly what it was supposed to do uh, is very, very important. Oh, we got going to the end of the show. We want to talk about Bitcoin. We've had two requests on Bitcoin. Uh, we haven't backed off very much, folks, from the, uh, uh, the $5,400 level. We got down to 4900 the 382 is at 4600, so it really hasn't backed off. But uh, there's a possibility you could get to that 4600 and watch it really closely because if you trade Bitcoin, that would be a really good buying opportunity. So 
watch it. That's uh, the bottom line of uh, what we're looking at here at uh, TFNN. So uh, unfortunately, all the lines were backed up today. You weren't able to get in. I know some of you are very frustrated, you know, waiting and waiting to get lined up. But uh, the call lines were so backed up, we couldn't get any callers in. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm back. Uh, keep an eye on these Treasury bonds, folks, because um, we did have a little 382 rally between the 17th and the 18th of April going to the 147 level. We're trading at 146.12 right now. Uh, these bonds and notes look extremely bearish, folks, uh, so I uh, don't want to put uh, – uh, too much of an emphasis on you to affect your opinions or anything, but from a charting standpoint, they're beginning to look a little bit suspect. Uh, regarding the gold, I would really love to see gold make another new low down around the 1260 uh, level, uh, either today or tomorrow, and then I will certainly be looking to um, get to the long side would be my guess, so I have to wait and see if that's going to unfold. Uh, remember, that uh, we've been up for a long time in this market. We do have a head and shoulders pattern in the weekly SPX. That's the S&P Cash Weekly. So uh, it may or may not work, but it has to stop right here. Any new high above the 923 level 
would certainly tell us that we are certainly uh, you know, on the uh, wrong side of the market if we're going to be short at that point. But uh, selling at that nine, uh, 29.19 looked like the right thing to do last Thursday so far. It's worked, but, you know, that might be short lived. We'll have to, to keep a close eye uh, on that one for sure. Regarding the crude oil, uh, we broke above the 61% retracement at 65. Uh, we got as high as 64.80, broke through that and went up to 65.80. Uh, in the uh, in the July crude oil, excuse me, it went to 66 in the July. The May uh, got up to 65.80, uh, and we're trading around 65.58 right now. That's a 1.618 expansion up there off the the shorter term 15 minute charts. But that's really all that's there. There's really nothing else to say that this could be an interesting top in crude oil because smashing through that 61 percent level is uh, very, very important, folks. That 6420 was strong resistance. 877-927-6648. See you on the flip-flop.